Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Today, I'm starting a brand new cyber deck project. And of course, with any good cyber deck, that means a brand new pelican case. Well, not brand new, used, of course. And we're not actually going with the monster pelican case here, although this is for a related project. I'm actually going to be building a cyber deck with this one here. Now, this is for an upcoming exhibition out at Open Source 2024 in San Francisco. That's going to be happening uh, June 15th and 16th, and I'll be out there along with a whole bunch of other YouTube creators, makers, amateur scientists, all kinds of cool people who will be talking about science, exhibiting their DIY projects, doing all kinds of neat stuff. So if you're in the San Francisco area, check that out. I'll throw a link down below. My particular project is going to involve a small radio telescope, and the actual antenna is going to live in this guy. Basically just got this as a shipping case. However, I want to build a computer to run the thing, and my old CyberDeck worked pretty well for that, but it's starting to show its age, some things are falling apart, there's things I wish I'd done differently when I built it, so that's why we're starting essentially from scratch here. Now, I've only got a few short months before Open Source starts, so I've been collecting parts and pieces for this. Like I said, we've got the Like New Pelican case here, and that's going to basically sit like this. It's going to be something like an old Osborne 1 computer with the screen and the guts in here and the uh, keyboard down here, which of course cats love to play on. Got a whole box full of junk that is going to go into that. Uh, first off, we have a Raspberry Pi 4. We have one of these uh, cool light-up hacker keyboards. I've got a few USB hubs and whatnot. A bunch of this stuff came from Axeman Surplus, where I like to get a lot of my tech stuff, especially if it's old, obsolete, or weird. Axeman Surplus probably has it. We've got some Velcro tape, as always, to secure things in there. A couple different uh, panel breakouts for different cables, so I can have front panel USB, Ethernet, serial port. Some of these I actually had to buy on Amazon. Can't find everything used or secondhand, unfortunately. We have a Raspberry Pi touchscreen. I believe this was a secondhand one. This was left over from another project that I was working on uh, with the wall scanner. Uh, I got a couple of these old screens, and this is just one that I don't need. To power this thing, I picked up a bunch of these uh, flat pack external laptop batteries from Voltaic. Again, these are from an auction, so I only paid like $20 each, and I've got a couple of these, so I'm hoping I can make an insert where they go right inside the device, and they could be potentially hot swappable, although we might need to think that out a little more. We have another little accessory box. This is going to hold things like a software-defined radio, filters, wires, adapters, all the stuff that I need to interface with my satellite antenna and potentially other radio projects in the future. More cables, uh, a nice little goodie bag of Axeman Surplus switches, buttons, even more Axeman Surplus stuff, a somewhat universal memory card reader, more Axeman Surplus stuff. They actually had some USB to serial cables, and these are pretty important. I use these all the time for interfacing with old devices. So how do I get all of this garbage to fit into this case in a usable, efficient, and practical way. With the old CyberDeck, I basically just started jamming stuff into a Pelican case. I did a little bit of planning, I did a little bit of custom fabrication, I'm going to do a little bit more CAD work, computer-aided design, and then I'm hoping to leverage some of my uh, maker tools like the laser cutter and the 3D printer to make some custom interfaces for this, uh, make a custom front panel. So we'll have our keyboard, our display, extra buttons and switches, USB ports, all that jazz, and then everything folds up and becomes waterproof and portable. I'm going for a more modern take on the old luggable PC computers of the early 1980s. There's just something about that form factor that I think is really cool. Now, I've never been much of a precision measurement and mathematics guy, and even when it comes to CAD design, I don't have a good way to accurately measure this opening with some of these little bumps and ridges that are in here, as well as these little offsets where I want to put the thing. So instead what I've done is take a picture as far away as I can to minimize distortion, throw it into Photoshop, or GIMP in this case, trace the outline along with all the bumps and curves, laser cut that into some cardboard, and then we just take our piece of cardboard and see if it fits in there. This one needs a little bit more adjustment, but it's getting pretty close. And that one is a perfect fit. So this is what I think of when I hear people talk about rapid prototyping. So I'm trying to leverage my 3D printer a little bit more for this project. I've been making these boxes. 
Uh, these are from a open box project on Thingiverse and the fellow that did these uh, made them customizable so you can specify the internal or external dimensions. This one is going to be for my battery packs and then this one is going to be for a box of extra goodies the RTL SDR and things like that. So these will be sitting inside the cyber deck, kind of like drive bays. And then I've been making these uh, lids just in kind of an accent color that uh, somewhat matches my hacker keyboard here. Now I still have a bit of a love-hate relationship with the 3D printer. It seems to work decently well for very simple things like square boxes. Although I'm still having issues with uh, these lids for some reason. This one kind of popped off the bed and deformed a little bit, so I don't think it'll open and close properly. This one just got like 3D printer cancer. This one is mostly okay. It's got a little bit of damage here and there, but I think it's pretty functional. So, um, yeah, we may or may not have to reprint one or more of these, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Now, you might think this Pelican case is way bigger than I need for a cyber deck for just a Raspberry Pi and a little screen. But remember, I'm also trying to cram all this other junk in there, so we're actually getting close to the limit for how much I can fit inside of that case. There are also some uh, protrusions here from the molding process. I don't think these are structurally necessary. I don't think they actually do anything to benefit the case. They just take up a little bit more room. So I'm going to go ahead and grind some of these off. So I've actually just discovered that these studs I ground down on the bottom have little holes in them. I want this to still be waterproof, so I'll probably just plastic weld those up. Even with the obstructions gone, these two boxes, these drive bays, are going to take up quite a bit of the case, almost 50% of it. So there's not actually room for the card reader. I wanted that to go in along the top, but it doesn't fit with these other ridges. And these are actually structural ridges, I think. So I'm not gonna be grinding those down. Now, there should still be a little bit of room up here. I could put some extra ports. I could put some antenna connectors. So we're not gonna waste all this space around the edges, but um, it does kind of limit what other gadgets can go into the box. Well, so far all the major components mostly fit. I'm doing my cardboard mock-ups. Unfortunately, my little bag of fancy buttons and switches is not gonna fit. I thought maybe I'd have some soft keys in there. I'm trying to film this right now with a box full of ducklings in the same room and they're very noisy. Okay, this next cut is for real. We've got a big sheet of black plastic in here from the hardware store. This is, uh, HDPE and it's so big it doesn't even fit in the laser cutter. I thought about lasering it in half but we just got the whole laser cutter set on top of the plastic so it's time to try an actual cutout of that front panel. All right so I've actually run this three times now to try to get all the way through the plastic and you really didn't get all the way through the plastic. We're gonna have to experiment with this some more. We also had a, a little excursion here with the laser it just decided to F off this direction for some reason, so yeah, uh, always a learning curve with these tools. That one got the panel outline, but did not successfully cut through all of the internal cutouts. That one looks like it worked a little better. We do still have a little bit of cleanup to do. There's all this soot on everything, so we're gonna have to wash this off, but I think that looks pretty good. Next, I 3D printed a few custom angle brackets and epoxied some nuts on there and then epoxied those into the Pelican case. So now I can start to get everything assembled. The biggest comment I got on the prior Cyberdeck build was, why didn't I just use a Raspberry Pi instead of some random old computer I found? Well, fine, we're using a Raspberry Pi. This is a Model 4B. This is one of the very rare occasions when I actually use zip ties for their intended purpose. Gotta make sure to get a little cat hair in all the crevices as I put this together. 
Okay, I can already tell things are getting tight with the USB cables here, so I'm probably gonna have to order some right angle adapters to get uh, USB plugs into these top two ports. I'm also trying to allocate my 2.0 and 3.0 ports. I think down here these are going to be the 3.0 and then my extra USB ports up here are just going to be 2.0. So I will need to uh, get both of these USB hubs in here somewhere as well. Let's just do another test fit here. Make sure all this nonsense still fits in our dry box. Yeah, I've still got some wires that need to be hooked up to things. All right, so that looks great, but I forgot to hook up anything for power for the Raspberry Pi, so we have to pull it out, get the power hooked up, and then we can turn it on and make sure everything works. So I'm really hoping my little screen works because I've epoxied it in place. I've used it before with a Raspberry Pi and it worked fine, but it sure seems like it's having some issues now. I think part of the problem is this Leet Hacker keyboard I got has a bunch of LEDs under the keycaps, and that just draws way too much power. These Raspberry Pis, I, the main problem I have with them is that no power source in the universe actually powers these things. They made them USB, but they made them so no USB device can actually power them except the special Raspberry Pi branded power adapter. So I am endlessly frustrated by that. Um, I wish they had made it so you could power it with any old USB supply. This thing here is a pretty big battery bank. It should be putting out plenty of power. That's actually a quick charge port, and it's still not enough to run the stupid Pi 4. Okay, I had to do some emergency wire rerouting, but we have the thing booted, and yeah, it looks like the touchscreen works fine. Now, it is still complaining about low voltage, but I've just grown to expect that. Anytime I've used a Raspberry Pi, it always has low voltage. Okay, I got script kitty mode turned off on the keyboard, so we're not getting that low voltage warning anymore. And there we go. Everything seems to be working so far. This is looking awesome already. I'm still trying to decide if I want a custom panel on the keyboard side. Right now I've got it so things can Velcro in place, like our power supply and the mouse. And the keyboard pops out. We have a backup battery in the bottom of it here. So that all clips back in. So the real question now is, will this still fold up and close with all this stuff in place? All right, we're good to go. All right, well this thing is basically done. I've got one or two more little steps to do. I can take the screen protector off. I have to hook up some of the antenna cables and we need to cover it in stickers. But otherwise, I think it's basically ready to bring out to open sauce and start running our satellite dish antenna. And then of course, I'm looking forward to using this with a bunch of other projects. Assuming it survives open sauce, of course. Um, this is going to be very interesting to get through the TSA because of all the interior DIY stuff and just the overall homemade nature of it. So I'm hoping it'll make it through the airport. We're hoping it will make it through open sauce and then it'll show up on some future videos running various satellite dishes, radio astronomy stuff, other radio experiments and things that I probably haven't even thought of yet. So I think it's time to do an all up, all in integrated test. So we've got the Cyberdeck set up out here. We have the antenna set up. I'm going to be running the CyberDeck on the battery to see how long it actually lasts. Will it last through an entire scan? And we're going to do a scan of my garage this time. We've done the southern sky before. We know what that looks like. We've scanned my house. I know what that looks like. I have not scanned my garage yet. And I just added a bunch of antennas to the roof. So that could be kind of interesting to see what does this antenna farm look like in KU microwave band. All right, our scan is done. This is our preview image. So how this works is it just takes an absolute value of the signal strength and writes it to a very small bitmap. That was just a quick and dirty way to get a preview of how it was working. I could probably try to improve that somehow, but I've really been too lazy to do so. And honestly, I kind of think this weird red and black goes with the theme of my cyber deck. So we're just gonna leave that preview image alone, but we can go ahead and run the actual image processing script now. So we run that against our raw data file. And hopefully that gives us a pretty picture. There we go. 
that is what the garage looks like in KU Band. So I'll throw some overlays up on the screen here, and I'm going to use some different color maps with matplotlib, that's the Python library that I'm using to visualize the signal strength heat map. We can see my garage at the lower right. We can see a tree on the far left. We can actually see a very faint ghost outline of some of my antennas on the roof. And then here is the visible light image from exactly the same location taken with a wide angle lens. So I'll do a few dissolves in between here and you can see how the features match up. Now I'm not 100% sure what all the noise in the sky is. Since this scan took about two hours to complete, those could be passing aircraft, it could be radar, I don't really know. I just consider it to be background noise. And my battery bank here still has three bars of juice. We started with four, so yeah, I think this will run just fine. Yeah, I don't super love the little extension USB cable here. We might come up with something slightly different for that. This other drive bay here is our accessory box. So that is just a little utility tackle box, and that contains a bunch of adapters, antenna wires, charger stuff, USB cables, an extra RTL SDR. We can also fit a couple more things in there, such as the Wi-Fi antenna. Of course, we have all of our port breakouts, so we can hook up Ethernet, serial, HDMI. We can have an external monitor for this. Plenty of USB. The ones down here are USB 3. These up here are USB 2.0. These extra antennas here, we're going to have one for a GPS and then this auxiliary one. Haven't quite decided yet what that does. Of course, we have our touchscreen interface. Still having a few issues with the resolution settings on this, but we'll get that ironed out. Let's see, we also have a headphone jack down here that just goes into the Raspberry Pi's four-way audio video cable. The whole thing is designed to close up with no penetrations, no holes in the outside case. So it should be completely waterproof. Just go ahead and shut this down here. I have a lot of trouble with Raspberry Pis not wanting to shut down. This is the first one I've had that actually does turn itself off when I tell it to shut down. Usually they just get to a terminal and hang forever and I have to unplug them. If you want to know more about the microwave imager part of this project, I will throw links to my prior videos on that down in the description, as well as links to my GitHub pages with all the code that I wrote for this. Make sure to like and subscribe so you see the future adventures of the Save It For Parts V2 Cyberdeck. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.